Let's create a document class. Go ahead and click this little uh, edit class definition button. And of course, we're presented with this dialog and we want to edit in Flash Professional. Let's give it a name. I like to give my document classes the same name as the FLA. So we're going to say Accelerometer Demo. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to open that up. And now let's go ahead and save this. Go ahead and click Save. And it's going to be in the same directory. We go ahead and click Save. There we go. Now we click back over to the FLA. Now this is very important. We can't mix code between a document class and the timeline. So keep that in mind. So we're going to remove all of the code from the timeline. Select this layer, select this frame, go ahead and then click the actions button or the you know the actions panel wherever you've hidden it. And we're going to press control A. We're going to select all this. We're going to press control X because we're going to exit out. I'm going to click over here. Temporarily we're just going to plug this in here. It's going to look ugly. But don't worry, press Control V just so we have the code. We'll fix it. Click back over here and just for safe measure, go ahead and remove the actions layer. So now we have a document with no actions layer and we have a document class. And now I'm going to click back over to the document class. Now what we've done is created a big mess. And the first thing we need to do is clean this up. So let's get rid of this import statement. And this is something to learn and understand so that when you take code from the timeline and you're putting it into a document class, you get a sense of what needs to happen. I'll cover some general things and I'll go quickly, but uh, just so you know, this is how I would approach it if I were creating it, which I am, oddly enough. Okay, when we're working with variables, we want to put the variables within the class declaration outside of the public function which there we go okay sorry getting my bearings and my kids running around so do his leap all right anyway <laughs> where was I uh, not my computer okay between the class declaration and the this uh, constructor function for the class we want to indicate our um, variables. Now, we need to make these, uh, we can't make these vanilla variables. We need to make these private variables or public variables. We need, we need to give them an, an, ac an accessor. An accessor. A, we need to define what type of variable they are in relation to the class. And these are private variables. So that's where that works. Now, this other code here. Um, if you recall from my other tutorials, because of course you're following all my tutorials, you know that I like to call an init function from the constructor. I don't like to initialize things within the constructor, and there's reasons for that, and I can't remember why. I just heard it from somebody once, and I bet people know what I'm talking about, and I'll figure it out sometime. But I did hear from some Adobe engineers, and it had to do with how the compiler works and how it, uh, the just-in-time compiler, the JIT compiler works, and how it does its code thingy stuff. So anyway, I'm just going to do this. Now, notice, remember, we did copy down here. We've got this bracket. Let's cut this bracket and let's put it back up here. you got to be careful when you place things because if you get out of alignment, then you're going to have issues. All right, we want to call an init function. And then below here, I want to call a private function. I like to put these in line. Man, that's OK. It's all good. We'll make it work. So we have an init function. And it's a private function. Init doesn't return anything. And within this, then we're going to set up our accelerometer stuff. We're going to say control X, control V. Now when we are in a function, we can create um, local variables. Now the question is, do you want to have this local variable? Do you need to ever access it outside of this function? Uh, if you do, you want to put it up here as a 
class variable. If not, you can keep it a local variable. For now, let's just get this code cleaned up. Uh, we'll still use this function here. And let's get this lined up for us. Go ahead and again, we're dealing with a private, private function. Now, at this point, when we're dealing with referencing the ball, let's X that and let's put that up here in the init. And now we can reference this move ball function. And let's give this private. And let's see where we're at. Now, let's see if this is going to give us any grief. I'm going to delete some empty space. Now, if we look at this, some people are going to look at it and say, hey, Brent, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. Notice we have the accelerometer, and we don't have an import statement. When you're dealing with a document class, you need to have import statements. Otherwise, the compiler doesn't know what you mean. When you're on the stage, however, you're in the FLA, the stage assumes um, a number of things in relation to what classes it knows. And so most of the package for the Flash uh, APIs are included and referenced from the stage. So that's why a lot of times you don't see import statements. But if you get into the habit of using import statements, then you can get a sense of where classes relate to each other and how they work. So that's why another reason why I like to use document class. If I have my cursor here and I press control space, then I can select the accelerometer. Now, of course, it overwrote it for me. And a way to work around that, notice how it added it for me. Now the other thing is I need this accelerometer update. If I put my cursor at the end, and then I press control space, then it's going to add the import, but it won't override it. So that's another thing to look at. Okay, what else? I think this event's going to give us grief, so let's go ahead. So I put the cursor after the event. And I press control space, and then it says, hey, which one? And you say, this guy, then it imports it for me. Sweet. All right, accelerometer event we already have. Event we already have. And we should be good to go. Now, one way to tell whether you did good, as they say, is there's this thing called check syntax, and this thing called auto format. Now, if I click auto format, it'll clean things up. Now things were already cleaned up because I did it manually. But if there was an error, it would say, hey, I can't really fix this because I don't understand it. If it doesn't understand it, it won't fix it. So go ahead and save this. And let's see where we are. Go ahead, click over, and let's run this. One thing you could do before you run it on the device, you could always press Control Enter and run it on the desktop. And if you don't get any errors, see, look, hey, that works. The only problem is we're not, we, we can't simulate the accelerometer, so let's exit out of that. All right, now, we know it works, so go ahead and click here, go there, click this, click that. You've done this before. Click this Publish button. i got to wake up my device, click over to my camera. And wait for it, wait for it. Yay, there it is. Yay, it's not working. Yay, something's not working. Awesome. Okay, let's close this. Well, we don't want to close that window. Let's exit the app. Go ahead and click OK. All right, somebody's staring at me going, ha, 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 Brent, you're so funny. Let's see. Let's make sure we did this right. Let's walk through this. This is good. This is good. I'm glad it messed up because I need to know. Let's do a couple of things. One, I think we are going to want to have this accelerometer object outside of this init function. Let's just do that. So, press Control C, copy that. Say private accelerometer, 
and then delete this stuff here delete this here save that now let's run it again and it should compile just fine all right compiled just fine good and quit and let's take a look at it let's see if we're all good move ball yeah 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 okay everything saved it's another thing to check let's go over here let's click this let's run this switch back all right second time's a charm as they say it's counting down oh here comes here comes hey there we go it's working and you're saying yeah Brent it worked just like you said it would awesome all right very nice okay so half the people have already left but that's okay you guys have stuck with it good good on you good on you all right so that's how you do it that's one way to work with the accelerometer hope you liked it i uh, hope you don't mind that i cheated a little bit i'll go ahead and post this on my website so that you can use this code in your uh, other projects thanks See you around.